Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's been a few days. I haven't had a chance to uh, make a video for you and discuss some topics that could be of some help to you, make you ponder. So today I want to talk to you about, first of all, it's a beautiful day. It's very sunny here and um, everything is bright. There's no rain. We can see the sky and white clouds. So I hope uh, wherever you are, you are enjoying a bright, a sunny and sunshiny day. Uh, if it's not outside, at least inside your heart and your mind would be all bright and calm and enjoyable. Now, having said that, we want to talk about the question of happiness. I know we've discussed the subject of happiness and we've discussed it in ways of a physical world, tangible things, what it is that we should really think of it to be, to form the basis and the foundation of our happiness. And on that premise, take the challenges of the world and so on. And the way we think and the way we appreciate life and the essence and the value of life in reality, not based on things and objects and uh, pleasures and so on and so forth. But today I want to talk to you about a different angle of the meaning and definition of happiness and what is happiness and how we can achieve that. Perhaps a little bit more uh, thinking thing, <laughs> but I know that's what you like to ponder anyhow. So let's get to it. So what is happiness? Happiness may have different meanings to many people, depending on what gives them pleasure. But let's talk about what is one of the definitions of happiness that could be true for everybody. And in every case, as a human being, as humankind, not as a particular situation and based on where we are, what we are, and what happiness would mean and be defined in that circumstance. What is happiness given everything is fine? There's no hazards, there's no nothing, but everything is fine. And you have all the basics of life and comforts and safety and security and all that, physical security and all that. But then you still may find yourself not happy. So we want to talk about what is it that can make us and help us to be happy and what are the things that we need to know or be aware of that could bring that happiness that we're talking about. So what is happiness? Happiness in this context is freedom. Not that freedom, physical freedom, political freedom. Not that freedom, the real freedom. Yeah, of course, these are, those are real too, but we're talking about this con context here. Have you had enough time to think about it, what I'm talking about? Happiness is freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from thoughts. Freedom from fears. Freedom from anxiety. Freedom from ego. Freedom from the things that we think about that they're not true and we think they're true. Freedom from thoughts that we never invited them. Freedom from thoughts that create comparisons of what it was, what it is, what it will be creates fear for us. Freedom from desires that are not necessary and we believe that it is necessary. Freedom from thoughts. So, how is that all accomplished? Now we know what it is. How is that all accomplished? Well, by understanding how our psyche works, 
by understanding what is thought itself what is consciousness what is ego what is desire how does desire form how is it born what is fear what is desire what is ego what is thought what is consciousness what is the relationship between thought and consciousness how does thought how is thought born where does it come from where does consciousness come from our thoughts come from our consciousness the content of our consciousness but where's consciousness itself come from what's the difference between consciousness and thoughts again what is desire that we think when we desire something the thought tells us we want something we desire it and we believe it what is it that we believe it should we believe it on what basis who tells us who has told us that we should believe our thoughts understanding all that how our psyche is put together what are the components and ingredients that what shapes our psyche and how do they interact with each other and how does it form the way we see things understand things or make sense out of them so to speak so we think by understanding how the psyche is put together the components of it then and only then understand how it functions it can lead to freedom because then we are not slave of our thoughts which since the thoughts comes from us therefore we think what comes from us is made inside us within us therefore it must be true we don't realize that we are made of two parts at least the physical portion what is visible physical function physical needs and mind the mental need the material process process of thinking thoughts consciousness ego desire fear all of that and the funny thing is that we have accept accepted the fact that in our physical form of being in phys in our physical portion of our being one part of our being the way our entity is mind and body is body in our physical portion we have accepted the fact that there are impurities that we got to get rid of and we have a way to get rid of we eat food and then we go to the bathroom we pull it out so we understand these are undesirable parts of our physical function that needs to get out and we do that and we're not and we understand that this is not useful gotta get out gotta get the toxins out gotta get the shit out but we somehow think that whatever the hell our brain our thoughts our mind produces within the form of thoughts fear ego desire they all seem to have to stay and there's nothing wrong with them and they're not impurities and they're not useless and they're all useful just because we don't have a physical way to get rid of them it doesn't have to be physical for us to understand it's either useful or useless based on its looks or uses or smell or whatever it is or unpleasantry of it our thoughts what this produces also just like what the physical portion of our body produces the refuse the refuses and we got to understand how they function how they're born how they're put together what it's supposed to mean how is it going to affect the rest of our being and thinking process and the what our psyche is made out of how we function and react and act in life and get rid of it how do we know what we should get rid of it by understanding how our psyche works and is put together to recognize what is usable what is useful what is not and get rid of it thought also has refuse we got to get rid of it and to understand that we need to understand how the psyche functions to come to understanding it and to come to freedom from it and to be able to have our psyche function to our advantage and free 
from the refuse. So, does it mean that we should abandon our interests? No, it just means to understand what is actually useful interest, what is not. Not just anything that is come to our thoughts is useful and supposed to be pursued. So we've got to be able to tell the difference between positive and negative, useful and shit. <laughs> Get rid of it, which that is an art and knowledge by itself. So all it means is when we understand how our psyche works, how it functions, how it has come to be, then we can get rid of the stuff that is not necessary and start focusing on living rather than be bogged down with unnecessary thoughts that are just mm, have no better place to, to go but in the toilet. And we haven't realized how. So we are focusing to understand how psyche is put together. And for that, you need to go to my playlist called The Psyche to understand the relationship between thought, consciousness, ego, desire, and fear, how they're each put together, how they're each come uh, together to be, and what is the relationship between the, the, each other, between them. Now, Part of the things that in life doesn't let you to be happy is because you have seemed to bought into the fact that having things make you happy. So you pursue things. And one reason that you pursue things, besides the, the, the obvious stuff, you know, luxury thing, you feel you're more because you have something and all that so forth that we talked about it in other videos. Also, you're attracted to pursue things and buy things and have things and dedicate your life to get things because things represent certain technology advancement and by having owning that advancement that technology that thing that has benefited from technology and advancement which has benefited from knowledge you're attaching yourself to knowledge because that thing represent technology and technology represent knowledge so you're attaching yourself to knowledge that's pretty much what you feel it makes you to be more, which we're all conditioned to be more in our life. So we pursue things to make us feel we are more, whether it's a thing, relationship, or uh, material stuff, uh, pleasures, whatever that makes us feel we are more than what we are. And most of the time, these are through pursuing stuff, like, I don't know, material things. But the material things that we pursue these days are all benefiting from technology, and technology represents knowledge. And therefore, really, we are seeking knowledge by pursuing things, isn't that? So perhaps we should just focus on the knowledge, and pursue the knowledge rather than things that each have only a bit of knowledge of different things. Now, by knowledge, You, you want that knowledge and that thing because you want to attain certain psychological security. And that thing that you get, let's say a car or a house or a vacation or something that you will own and you attain it, you feel secure You because you got something. And that thing gives you certain security, whether it's money or things. And that gives you psychological security. But that psychological security really is in the knowledge that that thing has been used to be produced. But whatever it is that psychological security that you're finding it in something or some cause or whatever it is, or belonging to a group or whatever it is, is the very reason that you cannot gain psychological security because you're now afraid of losing that what you have attained. And but the, the fear of losing what you've attained, which in your thoughts was going to bring you psychological security, is actually takes away that psychological security that you were in pursuit of. So why don't we just focus on the knowledge itself? Not the knowledge of how things are made, the knowledge of how our psyche functions. 
to be able not to fall for the traps that the psyche entices us to follow by bringing these thoughts and feelings, desire, ego, and fears, and so on. To know how they're born, how they're put together, why they're affecting us the way they do. That brings us the freedom that we're talking about, which makes you then start living to be free from being dominated by thoughts that are useless and unnecessary and have no place. They're just like the farts in the physical part of our body, which we just simply discard and we don't think of it but when a thought comes to our mind ooh, suddenly and of course a little bit more of these which many thoughts are transient thoughts and they're worth nothing are in my books uh, one of my books that called transient thought and me which you can go to my site and check it out there's a sample chapter of the book that you can read and there's more of information we don't want to make this video about the books so, so if we can focus on the knowledge about thoughts, how thought is born, where does it come from, where does it take roots, where its seeds has been planted, and if that's consciousness, where does consciousness come from, how is that formed? Where is the role of ego? What is ego? The desire, how is that put together? How does that born? The fears, what is fear? Is there such a thing as fear? And you can actually go on my site and there's a seminar I did for a local university called The End of Fear. There's a 10 minute free video part of it that you can watch on the site or the whole thing was one hour and you can purchase the whole thing, the very nominal fee. But that explains the relationship between fear and thought very interestingly. So I highly recommend that if you want to understand the role of thoughts and fear, which all ties down to happiness and how our mood is, how we function in our, in our daily life. Um, and when you go on my site, uh, don't forget to take a look at the sample chapter of Me, My Psyche and I me, my psyche and I. So, freedom is the ultimate goal of life. And somehow we seem to think that ultimate goal of life, freedom, comes with when we are rich and famous and we all want fame and we want to be rich and we want something but the mere of wanting to be wanting something that's when we are no longer free and that doesn't mean to abandon your desires for advancement and better things and more comfortable life and all not at all it just means to realize that understand how to control it and what are useful things in our life and start living rather than being trapped in our own thoughts and in pursuit of freedom in a wrong things, in things rather than in freedom from what our psyche kind of tries to wrongfully mislead us. When we understand it, then we are not even misled. We can tell this and that between what's happening in our own interaction between our own components of our own psyche. So, to understand that, we can reasonably control this desire which can very well be unlimited because desire for things, there's so, if you desire things in order to get that freedom, to get that psychological security, there's so many things, it's never ending. We get this one, there's another thing. We get that one, there's another thing. Because we really are pursuing things to give us that psychological security, that feeling of importance or being more. But instead, we can understand the role of our psyche, how that functions, and be totally free of pursuing something, but understanding how we function. And therefore, from that, we control the desires, the unnecessary desires, and attain the freedom uh, from within, not by pursuing things from outside, which is a never-ending stuff. So, I lost you.
now I can see myself. <laughs> so having said that, I hope that would be something that it would help you to realize how we can attain the real psychological security and freedom and not the fake one by pursuing things and desires that are unlimited. Therefore, we will always forever be chasing for that psychological security and that freedom and never get to it. So hope that you had something to think about and something for you to ponder. And I look forward to talk to you again and soon. And don't forget to check the uh, playlist called uh, The Psyche. There is a lot more explanation about what we said and what we want to achieve here in there. All of that ego, desire, thoughts, and consciousness, fears, all explained in that playlist. So hope you'll have a good time and uh, watching it and enjoying it. And be good to yourself and to the others. And talk to you soon.